Mercury orbits the sun closer than Earth does. Whoa! You learn something new every day. Or news is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. Okay, cool. Hit the button, baby. What do you got for me? An update. Good morning, folks. Are you cool? Hey, everybody. It's your head jump. Eyes to the skies. Because I'm going to be dropping some hard Thor news science upon you. Hell yeah! We're flying now! This is a Thor news presentation. Oh, yes, I do try to be awesome. Ladies and gentle people, I'm here talking to you about Monday's Mercury Transit. Now, I will be totally honest with you. This story kind of bores me. So, we're going to kick on over to Philip Plate, a man who's synonymous with making anything interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's Saturday. I'm having fun. Back off, jack off. Okay. Yeah, so if you're expecting serious science out of this, it's, that's all up to Phil, man. I'm just going to blabber mouth. And if that's what you want, then excellent. That's what you're going to get. And if you don't, then, well, go find something else you'd rather do, jerkweed. On Monday, a very cool astronomical event will occur. The smallest planet, Mercury, will appear appear to move across the face of the sun. This relatively rare event, called the transit, happens on average only about 13 times per century. Or once every seven years? I guess my math might be off. Mercury is small, that's what she said, but big enough that with the right equipment, that's what she said, it will appear as an inky black dot silhouetted against the sun, moving slowly across its face. In the article below, I'll detail the important times of the transit how to watch it, why this event is rare, and just why it's so interesting. Okay, great. But first, Philip's got to play mom near Mother's Day. Looking at the sun without proper equipment is very dangerous, like blinding yourself badly and perhaps permanently. Level dangerous. Never look through a camera, binoculars, or telescope, or any kind of optical device at the sun, unless it has been set up to do so safely by someone who knows what they're doing. Asterisk. All right. And remember, whenever Phil uses an asterisk, that's code for Thor News is awesome. Now, Phil's being honest here. Uh, I've got a little black spot on my eyeball when I look at things because I spend a lot of time staring straight at the sun. I don't always heed warnings and stuff. Sometimes I pay the price. Sometimes I don't. Um. So yeah, don't stare directly at the sun unless you don't mind having part of your vision lost. Okay, we good? Good. Now let's talk transit. Now remember, even though a lot of astronomers like to poo-poo astrology, pretty much all of Wall Street, all of your Illuminati, and all of uh, your secret society groups use astrology like a clock. And they base all their weird energy spirit stuff on astrology. So just thought I'd let you know. So when they're saying astrology is totally bullshit, well, I want you to know that Mercury retrogrades are usually pretty rough. And I think we're in Mercury retrograde right now. The transit begins on Monday at 11.12 UTC. So remember, right before the transit, make a wish, make it count, make it a good one, and then begin to enjoy as Mercury crosses the sun. Is Mercury the sun's moon? I don't know, maybe. And remember, who knows? Maybe there's a chance Mercury could explode. And we could see it. Probably not, though. This is the moment the edge of Mercury first appears to touch the edge of the sun. Ooh, that's sexified. Do you really have to sexify this story, Phil? I mean, I agree it's kind of boring, but, uh, you know, you really have to put sex into science. Science is interesting enough without all the sexual stuff, man. So can we just get back to the bold, hard, throbbing science? All right, what's it talking about? It's talking about some dumb shit like, well, Mercury's crossing the sun. And Mercury literally walks across the sun. No, that's not true. I made that up, trying to make the story interesting. It takes about three minutes, that's what she said, for the planet's entire disk to move completely into the disk of the sun. Remember, ladies, if it does take only three minutes, that's a compliment to you. Mercury reaches the midpoint of the transit more than three hours later. Bum, bum, bum. I wish Sage was here. She could do the bum, bum, bum. But she's in the kitchen cooking. No, that's not a sexist remark. It's just the truth. Dickweeds. The beginning of the end of transit is 1839 UTC. And remember, well, that means Universal Texas. Cool. Uh, I don't know what... Okay. When the leading edge of Mercury touches the inside edge of the sun, three minutes later, it's all over. As the trailing edge of Mercury leaves the sun behind, I hear Sage cursing in the background. The kitchen adventure must not be going well. You need me to mansplain kitchen shit for you, baby? <laughs> Microwave problems. All right, what are we talking about? So Mercury's going across the sun. You know what something Sage says to me all the freaking time? I wish I had my welder's mask. The transit takes so long that most of the planet will see at least part of it. The sun rises during the transit for much of the Western US, for example, and sets mid-transit for most of Africa and Eastern Europe. Sorry, Australia, Japan, Indonesia. The transit happens at night for you, and you'll miss it. Oh, that was nice. Can't they watch some, like, slew telescopey thingy? Don't despair. 
Global map of the transit visibility. The eastern parts of the Americas and extreme west of Europe and Africa will get to see the whole dang thing. Well, lucky you guys. But don't despair. Lots of observatories are doing live webcasts of the transit. And this is a great time for lovers to make out. You get plus 10 to charisma and stamina. I made that up too. That's not real hardcore science. Fruity pebbles sound wonderful. NASA will post a live stream on NASA TV, asterisk, on their Facebook page, asterisk. NASA has a Facebook page. That's funny. That's hilarious. I don't know why. They'll also post transit images from the Solar Dynamics satellite as quickly as possible on the observatory's page as well. Bill, you haven't explained to us why this is exciting yet. Blah, 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 blah. You can read all this crap yourself. I don't need to go into it if you're really that interested. You can go do all that, go watch it all and all that. You can find yourself a buddy and you guys can um, do whatever. You and your buddy can do whatever. You have Thor News' permission. If you want to see this for yourself, I imagine lots of astronomy clubs will be hosting events for it. See if there's one near you. There ain't no party like an astronomy party because astronomy parties don't start. I'm just kidding. I'm an astronomer. You're an astronomer. We're all astronomers. And we all like to party. Well, some of us do. If you already have the proper equipment, then by all means, give it a shot. That's what she said. All right. Can you feel it? I feel it. Okay, great. Mercury's transiting. This is so exciting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mercury's transiting on the sun, and it's just so exciting. I can't contain myself. She's eating fruity pebbles, man. That's what I wanted to do. Whatever. Uh, eat fruity pebbles. If it's clear in Colorado, I plan to smoke a lot of pot, get really high, and then watch the transit, Phil said between the lines. It's not written in there, but you know, I think that's what he means. It's totally legal to smoke pot in Colorado, and I've heard that it helps astronomy. Like, if you're sitting there staring at the stars all night, I have heard and read white papers that say pot helps your science in. Totally, man. But do it safely. You know, like, if it's your first time you've ever done science and pot together, then have some buddies there to watch over you. And try not to mix the tequila with the pot, or you'll get weird highs and crap. What am I talking about? Oh, it's Saturday. Okay, great. I'm talking about nothing. And now you're mad. Somebody's down thumbs in. I'm like, that's good. You got all your negative energy out. My down thumbs in me, now you feel better. No, you don't. You feel worse. I have a specially constructed solar telescope. I bet you tell all the ladies that, Phil. And I don't know what it means. And while it's difficult to get my phone connected to it correctly, <laughs> that's what she said, I'll give it a try. I might even stream it live on Periscope if I can get it working. Follow me on Twitter. I can't, dude. You have me blocked. Now, if everybody could go to the bad astronomer and say, will you please unblock Thor of Thor News, new Thor on Twitter, because he's awesome. And, um, and uh, you blocked him because he asked you a normal question about common icing, and that's that's not really cool. That's exclusive science, Phil. That's not inclusive science. We're all trying to science here, buddy. You know, you're trying to go by the crossing the T's and dotting the I's and being all super accurate, correct? And I'm trying to make science interesting. Well, yeah, being kind of factual, too. You know? Okay. How this works. When does it get exciting, Phil? I'm 11 minutes in on this audio, and I'm still bored to tears. So why do we see a transit? Like an eclipse, it depends on geometry. Uh-oh. Close your eyes. I feel some weird Illuminati crap coming on. It is, after all, like a mini eclipse. Uh, okay. Seriously, dude, if you don't spice this thing up, I'm ending this video because I'm bored to tears. The orbits of Mercury and Earth, the lighter part of Mer <laughs> Mercury orbits the sun closer than Earth does. Whoa! You learn something new every day. Its orbit is slightly tilted with respect to ours, about 7%. Seven's a cool number. That, that's not much, but given the geometry, it's enough that in most cases, when Mercury gets in between us and the Sun, it misses the Sun's actual disk passing above or below it. See, here's the deal. You get too sciencey for me here. And um, the greatest transit of all time. And we're just going to get a boring transit, I guess. So yeah, I don't think I can continue this story because, oh, we're getting to what's the big deal. The next one will be on November 11, 2019, about three and a half years from now. The next one after that is 13 years later. Wow. Okay, so what's the big deal? I should just skip to this part. I know that some folks might think the whole thing is a ho-hum event. Yeah, dude. I can assure you, with no hints of bias at all, that these people are hollow shells of humans. Wow, Phil. That is a low blow. Why do you scientists like to hate on people so much? You know, we're humans too. No, seriously. This is pretty cool. Okay, I ain't taking it away from you. I'm saying to me, you know, I, I don't know your weird Illuminati secrets, so if you could kind of let us know between the lines, that'd be great. I've seen a couple of Mercury transits and two Venus transits, too, and it's decidedly weird to see that tiny, perfect little circle 
slowly move across the sun's face. It connects you with the cycles of the universe. Get a little new edge, yummy Phil. Shows you how wonderful and rare grand such events can be. Just ask these folks. Okay, yeah, divine architecture, meaning eclipses, transits. It just shows how wonderful God is. When you say, Phil, bum, bum, bum. I just felt his face get red and angry. And he probably like broke something in his office and was like, there's no God, you damn humans and your God and causing climate change. Can't we all just get along, man? You know, it's scientifically useful as well. Whatever. All right, I'm sorry I took you this far. So yeah, it's special, but it's still boring, okay? Remember, kids, don't look at the sun or you'll go blind. Now, they told you that about masturbation, but that was a lie. The sun, that's true. Okay, hopefully you had fun or aren't mad at me. Okay, great. Peace out. God bless everybody. Monday. Watch it. Sorry, Phil.